Pete uh, took off, pulled off to the side of the road there and said, get out. So we got out and we went up there and we got up close to him and he took off running. And then he turned around and stopped. And Pete put the sticks up there and he was facing me and I pulled the trigger. I got the crosshairs on him and through the video camera we could see slow motion as you could I guess hopefully and uh, see where he had actually dropped and went to the ground and got back Good. up. Good choice. Good choice. They said it was a good hit, good hit and we chased him and we saw blood and we kept on going and then we could see where it had laid down and uh, then after that we jumped him up and it took off and finally Pete says uh, you guys just stay here so him and Joe the tracker took off after him oh yeah one little small important factor uh, they took their shoes off uh, for the stop so they could be quieter while they were going through the bush and they were gone for a little while, half an hour, and then they were gone about an hour. They drove the truck on back to us and and uh, had uh, um, Pete finish, put the uh, final round in them, put them down. He was running very far, this thing. And he tracked and tracked and tracked and tracked, but he's running and running. And suddenly Joe spotted, he said, that black thing, it's him. He was standing broadside like this, looking at us. So I went down on my knee, it's like okay, there's his shoulder. Pull the trigger, open it, click. No way! Put another round and there it goes. Oh my god. He hit it, but it didn't went off. And there that whole piece is gone. I said, tell I told Joe, this thing is fucking lost. I said, now let's go. We walk. Maybe six, seven kilometers. We found him again under the bush, to jump up, run. I said. Then we walk into a bunch of zebras. Oh. But his tracks is going right into the group of zebras. And so he said, maybe he's close. But the zebras took off, walk, walk, walk. We walked 200 meters. He said, there's black in here. He's standing in the bush. See? I said, fuck it. <laughs> If it's him or not him, what's the chances? <laughs> Fuck, it's him. <laughs> so the in here and on the neck here. That's okay. where that's where mine was? Yeah. Well, you said aim for the center. <laughs> it was in the center of his nose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Hey, you, why you tell me now? Yeah, you he would have shown me later. If he would have stood still, we could have done that later. <laughs> so, Jackie, happy? Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> we went over there and got him and loaded him in the truck by hand. Yeah, they didn't use a winch because uh, I think Pete was trying to teach me a lesson. Uh, not to make him walk the four <laughs> kilometers uh, after him. Hi, this is Brad. Uh, talking about day two. Uh, first, let me go over day one. Uh, got a, a zebra yesterday. Uh, we were driving, and um, Joe saw a, um, a zebra and a wildebeest bulls. And uh, we got out and started up into the bush. Oh, about uh, a few minutes later, we we saw the uh, wildebeest uh, moved up to a place to position ourselves to shoot. Um, saw some of the uh, wildebeest cows 
and then uh, we moved up to another place and I could see the wildebeest cows to the left and uh, then Pete said okay he's coming out from the right which I thought oh, okay the bulls coming out from the right and when it stepped out it was a zebra and he, I said that one and he said sure yeah yes yeah shoot and so I shot and uh, <clears throat> they said it was uh, hit and went about 20 yards and died Good shot. Congratulations, my man! <laughs> Love it! We had a bull wildebeest there, too. Did you? Did you? It was a bull wildebeest, yeah. And uh, we waited for the longest time, and then we got set up, and then this one came walking out. Beautiful. Look said, that's one. So, because I was, uh, I was thinking we were looking for a um, wildebeest, uh -huh. and then when I saw this come out, he said that one. So, nice. nice. There he, is. he didn't go far. So, <laughs> damn it! Why you gotta make Joe earn his money? <laughs> we came back and we ate lunch. Wonderful lunch. It was spaghetti. Oh my gosh, fresh salad. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's homemade fabulous. Rolls. Homemade rolls to go with it. And we got back here to Lodge about one o'clock. And uh, then we had a little free time. I guess I say free time. Uh, it wasn't a lot. We all had to get on Facebook and see the postings and catch up on social media. And we. Uh, took off again for our afternoon hunt and we drove around and we'd stopped and I'll let Brad uh, tell you that story about his stock and it left me and Sue back at the truck and while we were back at the truck it was probably 4:35 o'clock I guess and it was getting a little towards dusk and we kept hearing this noise and it, was, it sounded like you know, uh, uh, possibly uh, Impala, male Impala in heat. Well, as it turns out, when Joe was coming back, uh, he told us that was a leopard that was growling. So Sue and I got to hear that for a little while, right? Close to truck, of course, we never did see it. Um, but yeah, that was a unique experience. Never saw one of those. So yeah, phenomenal. That was about it for the... Uh, surprises today hopefully uh, we'll have more uh, in surprise for tomorrow so stay tuned all right stay tuned for the jack and sue uh, nighttime diaries all right good night everybody Chicken curry, some rice, uh, sweet potatoes, green salad, and some bread. I smell yeah. the garlic. Yes. <laughs> then after that, that we are going to have a dessert, which is honeycomb with oh. custard. With custard? Yes. Nice. Thank you. Enjoy your dinner.
today is day uh, day two of hunting. Um, we started out this morning um, with with uh, uh, Jack going on a three hour hike with uh, Eugene and Joe and uh, Morgan, and uh, after about uh, I don't know, a little over three hours, they had seen basically nothing. We didn't see much in the morning. Um, most of the animals we saw were in the afternoon. We followed the zebra tracks uh, from 7 a.m. until about 10 a.m. And we never saw the zebra and we never saw another animal. lunch. We had a nice braai out there uh, in the riverbed. Wonderful lunch. So we're riding along and it was kind of a bendy road turn and I looked up ahead and I could see a oryx sleeping on the side of the road or resting in what turned out to be a little shade tree. So we stopped the truck and got out and we probably walked 7,500 yards up and Eugene set the sticks up, I got ready, I pulled the gun up and he goes, that's a good bull. And about that time, I stopped and I said, oh, is a shooter? I said, Eugene, I said, it only has one horn. He leaned out again, looked a uh, better look with the binoculars, and said, uh, yeah, don't shoot that one. So we came back to the truck, and Brad and Sue go, well, what's going on? What happened? And I was just grinning ear to ear because it was so funny that it did. It had a fabulous horn. Um, on it and it would have been a great trophy if the other one would have been there but uh, it didn't so we came back to the truck and and that was uh, it uh, um, uh, for the day the hunt for me uh, Brad uh, had some fantastic time with the Impalas and he'll be uh, there with sharing his uh, uh, video diary with you uh, with that Then uh, we saw some Impala, which we got on the Impala, and uh, the Impala, there was probably five or six uh, males, and the biggest male was uh, running and was just chasing the other ones all around. We, we got up and the biggest uh, ram ran out, and it small one was in the way and then the small one got out of the way and um, Eugene told me to shoot and I shot and it went click and uh, <clears throat> we jacked another round into it and, and uh, I don't know probably 15 minutes later another uh, the, the, or the same ram came running back down and Eugene yelled and the ram stopped right in the center and I had the crosshairs on it, click again. <laughs> so we were all 
a little frustrated. beautiful day we had a great time and uh, as we were heading back to camp um, the uh, a diker showed up and they got me out of the truck to shoot the, the diker which I couldn't see at first and uh, then they moved the sticks and told me the dikers between the tree and apparently the diker was I thought was a rock and it wasn't a rock, it's actually a diker. So I shot and it said it kind of ran two half circles and uh, Eugene thought that it was hit. He thought he saw like a piece of guts hanging out the side. We checked the videotape and it was just dark enough that we couldn't really tell. So we'll be going back in the morning to uh, check and see uh, if I did actually hit it, I'm hoping I didn't because I hate to wound an animal and uh, you know have it out all night. But uh, diapers are pretty small, and if I hit it with 30 odd six, I can't imagine it lasted very long. So, but. what are we having tonight? What are you doing? Uh, this is a. Uh, um, Blue wildebeest uh, fillet. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a stuffy fillet. Okay, nice. Yeah. All right, you got to wrap the tin foil. Yeah, just for a moment, uh, maybe halfway. Mm -hmm. Then I take it out. Then uh, I have to um, Ah, okay, very nice. Thank yeah. you. We had a good dinner tonight. Sat around the fire. Had a wonderful time, enjoying uh, everyone and. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Our dinner is ready. Uh, tonight we are going to have uh, peri peri chicken livers mm -hmm. for a starter. And then on our main course, we are having uh, a stuffed barbecue um, uh, blue wild beast fillet. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some potato salad. Uh, we've got three bean salad. Mm -hmm. Got broccoli in cheese sauce. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then for dessert, we're going to have a fruit cocktail. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you yeah. very much. Mm -hmm. Nice. We're going to see. Uh, last night, I shot at a diker at dark, and it looked like it was hit. But uh, we couldn't. It got too dark, and we couldn't find anything. So, first thing this morning, we're going back out to check and see if I hit it. Right. So at least we have a track. Okay. What? I think the diker, yeah. he died here last night. Oh. So now we just need to find out where the jackals pulled him to. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it looks like it went underneath this brush. Um, yeah. It took us about half hour, 45 you minutes. That? And Eugene came back to the oh, truck uh, with one thumb up and one thumb down. <laughs> we go, what the heck is that? He goes, uh, he, he told us uh, that was uh, good, but uh, uh, they found it. And also uh, bad uh, because the jackals found it as well. Uh, and there was nothing left but the head. Well, Brad? This is what's left of your jackal, your, huh? your diker of last night. Right. Well, um, <laughs> the jackal skinned it for you right up to the head. But at least oh, it's well. a nice old yeah, buck. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, we ran out of daylight and uh, we had a, about 300 yards, 400 yards before we found it. So. Unbelievable. But at least you have a nice little skull mount. Well, and we found there it. There we go. And we knew what happened. 
How about that? Jackal's got it. Joe, <laughs> excellent work. Thank you. This guy is the best. No bigger, oh, yeah. man. All right. How about that? Well, there he is. This guy is amazing. Isn't he? I know. Unbelievable. It, it is, it, he's one of a kind. Wow. <laughs> Brad, just quickly sit behind your dike. <laughs> <laughs> quickly, yeah. <laughs> quickly, huh? <laughs> there you go, huh? Oh, that's a We drove and we got out again at a, a sandy spot where a bunch of tracks and stuff were. And uh, Eugene said, let's go for a walk for a zebra. I said, okay, just so it wasn't a three hour uh, tour like we had a couple days before that. We were walking along, we found some uh, old kudu horns that were probably about 40 inches um, in depth there and uh, the uh, uh, looked like it had been a kill. Somebody got it, whether it was a predator or maybe somebody shot it and didn't ever find it. But uh, yeah, so and then we were walking a little bit farther and we saw a nice dying buck. So we're seeing lots of game on this uh, little tour this time as opposed to seeing three hours with nothing. We walked out to the road and finally got back to the road there and we were just sitting there and I see a little young kudu uh, calf. All of a sudden Eugene goes, get your gun, there's a zebra. So I reached back and grabbed my gun that was leaning up against a tree. I thought we were going to walk down the road a little ways. Eugene puts the sticks up. I said, which one do I shoot? He goes, there's only one, it's the one on the left. So I uh, pulled the trigger and uh, it took off running, and then you could hear it running, and it came like it was running back to us. And then it crashed through, and uh, Eugene <clears throat> said it probably had went down. Was it good? It sounded like it, yeah. Mm. I could hear it. But uh, it was about a 200 yard shot, is what he estimated. So um, a little farther than the normal uh, shot here is about 50 yards. Um, Joe and Sue were driving down to see us, and uh, they could hear the shot go off, and they go, oh my gosh, what, what, what did you shoot, what did you shoot? So Eugene and I were walking up the road when Morgan or Brad uh, uh, pointed it out and said, right there's the zebra. So there it was, and we had a wonderful morning. Beautiful wide and open, beautiful video of that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the mayor coming out and we stopped uh, probably 15 or 20. Damn. Yeah, we, we saw those yes. down Did there. You? They crossed the road. Yeah. Yeah. They were all females, though, weren't they? Oh, I don't know. I could, yeah, well, I they, think they were all females, oh, yeah, because they crossed down there. Down and through there. So we yeah. seen all of them. And then we got right up close to them and saw them again. Mm -hmm. And then we just started coming back here with the wind. And we popped out on the road and he called you. And then we looked yeah. down there. I saw a female kudu with the little young, right there mm -hmm. a little bit. And then all of a sudden, Eugene, I quit looking, you know, I'm still kind of looking a little bit, and Eugene goes, Zebra, get your gun. <laughs> I grabbed my gun that was leaning up against the thing, put the sticks up. I said, I said, which zebra? He goes, the one on the left, there's only one. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you see? No, I didn't know because there were a group of animals, and I oh, hadn't pulled my gun. gun up yet to see okay. which one it was. Okay.
Well done. We got it finally. Not your very typical shape. Yeah. Normally the tip will go out. Mm -hmm. But you can see it's an old male. Yes. Maybe maybe on the bases, maybe on the horns. Yeah. But um Anything right down? Yeah. 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 He's got a nice bell, that back swing. Yeah. Yes. Very, very deep. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> a little bit of a non-typical. Wow. But still I think the the stalk was good and Thank the shot you, was perfect. Thank you. Very Congratulations. Much. Nothing for you to track today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, you keep the jackals off. Okay. Nice job. Oh, nice job. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice job. <laughs> yeah. So now it's the afternoon and uh, Brad had some wonderful action and I'm sure he told you all about it but it was about 4.30 or what we are called the uh, witching hour where you have about an hour left of the day and Eugene said come on Jack let's go. So I was up and we took a little walk through some woods and ended up on a power line which seems to be uh, very very productive. Uh, on the power line because uh, a few nights before that when we were with Pete on Sunday we saw the uh, oryx and just ran out of daylight otherwise I would have probably had uh, uh, oryx already but um, so we were going down through there and you could hear already I'm sure in the video the uh, uh, jackals uh, barking and screaming you know about it and uh, so it was a wonderful thing when we were sneaking up through there and, and we saw uh, probably six or eight wildebeest probably a quarter mile away and we just kind of ducked back off the trail the power line and walked up a little bit and then came back out and there was one left and he just scooted on by and uh, we were just walking along taking our time moseying just like we did in the, uh, in the morning there with the zebra a kudu stepped out into the power line and uh, along the power line he started to walk towards us. He was probably 250 yards away and uh, he just kept coming closer and closer and closer and in the same time Joe and Brad and Sue were driving the truck up and he got probably 150 yards from us. Me and Eugene and Morgan were just standing out in the open. It was a beautiful kudu, big, big bull, and uh, nice dark uh, cape on it and everything. White dots, white on his nose really stood out, they said. So that was kind of it. That's the end of the day. So uh, we'll see you again. We left, uh, say, 3 o'clock. Uh, I woke up at 3, and we... Uh, Departed the area after our wonderful breakfast that Savius fixed for us. Got in a truck uh, with Morgan, the uh, video man, the wonderful guy that did a great job with this video. Rode with him, Sue, Brad, and I did, and Eugene, and Joe drove in Eugene's truck. And we drove about mm, 45 minutes or an hour. And of course, once we got there, we picked up a a tracker. It was another concession that uh, Eugene leases. We dropped Brad off at a blind um, overlooking a water hole and uh, Eugene, the tracker, 
and Sue and I went out and uh, we drove around for probably a couple of hours and then we stopped one time and got out and we just made kind of a big circle but lo and behold while we were gone Sue saw a calico cat or cutco cat um, here in Eugene she showed, took pictures of it, it was right out in front of the truck and uh, she showed it to Eugene and he said he'd been doing this 16 years and he'd only seen those twice so very very fortunate that Sue got to see that um, and we got some great pictures of it Paula started coming in like crazy we had Impala we had Dikers we had Steenbuck and um, we had all kind of animals coming in. Then a troop of uh, baboons came in, probably 30, 35 even. And uh, they had a huge male leader. There were several males in the group, but the male leader uh, sat over from me. So Joe, my tracker said, uh, we're going to chase them off. So these uh, uh, baboons just stopped and looked at Joe and as soon as they realized what he was they <coughs> all took off running and and there was just dust everywhere from all these things taking off and running so it's a big so then we picked them back up for lunch and we had the braai out there as they call it here a little barbecue same thing we had a sausage with uh, bread that Eugene cooked that had tomatoes and ham and cheese uh, in between them and uh, we cooked those over open fire again We were walking down through there and we had this kudu bull. Uh, you could just see the tree shaking and it was just raking it up and down just like you did with a uh, um, elk or something would there in America. But uh, we got done and that thing was just thrashing back and forth and uh, I didn't really go in and take a good look at it. We didn't want to, you know, harvest a kudu anyhow so we just carried on those folks radioed us and said hey where you at and we just said okay come get us well when they were coming to get us um, <laughs> they saw two oryx that just were standing there in a while where's Jack when you need him son of a father oh. could have jumped out of the truck there put the sticks up and hammered them but uh, that's uh, hunting for you so I didn't get an opportunity at oryx so uh, hopefully on uh, day five, I'll have a little bit better luck. All right, have a good day. We went out this morning uh, on their other concession and built a blind near a, a water hole there and, and this area has a lot more water holes to it and we um, had, had a blind built, Joe and, and uh, Morgan, and it was about 80 yards off the water so it was back considerably farther. And they no sooner left and we sat down and then we started seeing uh, dikers and steenbuck. We had uh, a group of uh, four uh, warthogs come in and uh, there was a big female but I wanted to get a, a male. And so I let those go. Then we had several impressive impalas come in. One, 
one large ram came in that, and he had uh, probably 25 ewes with him, females. So we knew he was quite a fi fighter and he was rounding them up, but I was trying to you know, wait till he got near the water and away from the ewes so I could shoot him. And then all the ewes moved in and uh, they started uh, drinking. And so he was back out where I couldn't see him. Then he started to walk back the other way and he had a ewe right, be, right in front of him and, and several right behind him. So again, I couldn't shoot. And this, this was really an impressive ram. It was very, very large. And we saw some, some water buck females and uh, one small uh, buck, uh, water buck, but um, much smaller uh, than what I wanted and uh, much smaller than what they usually take. It wasn't a mature one, so. So we went back to the lodge for lunch and we picked uh, Jack up and that's when I found out that he had shot a blessed buck that, that morning. I'd steal it off it. I had an awesome time with you guys. Uh, that was the best. <laughs> Thank I, you, my man. Really, I know. Take it easy. <laughs> Enjoy that baby Thanks, and my fears. And the stallion. The stallion. Never the stallion. Forget. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I know. I had a ball. Yeah. I had a good time with you. Yeah. Oh, I'm yes. just going to shake your hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over on no, the we, we want a, a proper photo, Morgan. <laughs> I'm looking at myself. Professional photo. So whenever you're ready, I'll look up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, stop sneezing, right? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a couple of five. Thank you. All right.